What's going on guys? It's the Tyke team. I'm Cameron and I'm Connor and we're here today to talk to you a little bit about who we deal with on a regular basis within our Airbnb business. When operating a business, even as a sole proprietorship, you can't get away with just doing business with yourself. You end up always having to deal with other people, whether it's even online or in person or on the phone or whatnot, but you can't really have a business where you're just solely working for yourself, by yourself, with nobody else involved. Even if you're on your computer, you're more than likely working with different um, customer service representatives of a software company that you're working with or whatever it may be. And so today we really wanted to break down in detail the people that we work with, with our furnished rental uh, Airbnb business, Blue Door, on a regular basis. Uh, we, we are really excited to kind of dive in and hope that what uh, information that we provide to you today is beneficial in your venture into this industry. As you can imagine, in an Airbnb business, one of the main people or businesses or other companies you deal with is a cleaning team, cleaning person, cleaning crew. So having a cleaning company is so important in an Airbnb business. When a guest first walks into your room, the first thing they're gonna see is, is the, did I go to the right apartment or room or house? And is it clean? If the apartment or house or room isn't clean, that is going to give the Airbnb host a bad review. People want um, a clean apartment, a clean space, a safe space. They want bed sheets that have been cleaned. They don't want stains. They don't want food or other things on the floor. Um, they want a clean area. So having a cleaning crew, it can either be a company you hire, a person you hire, or a group of people that you hire to clean your apartments. Now you can have a team lead, that works for you to manage the group of cleaners or the cleaning company, but it ultimately it's on the owners, which is us in our Blue Door business, that is responsible for making sure that the apartment is clean. We have to ensure that each apartment is up to our perfections and we have checks and balances and checklists to ensure that our cleaners are cleaning properly every area of the apartment, making sure uh, bed sheets are clean, making sure blankets are clean, making sure our pullet couches don't have any food stuffed into the sides, uh, washing dishes and our curried coffee machine, just making sure every area of our apartment is clean for the guest. In Phoenix, Arizona, the busy season is between January and March, um, maybe through April. There's just a lot of events and a lot of things going on during that time frame. In one month, our Blue Door business had 42 turnovers. Think about that. That's 42 different guests coming in and out, all hours of the night, people checking in, checking out, cleanings, 42 cleanings that we had to make sure in a span of 30 days in one month. It's a lot of turnover, a lot of people coming through, a lot of footsteps, a lot of tracking dirt into our apartments. So making sure that your, your cleaning crew can actually handle that type of volume is so important. All right, now we're gonna talk about not necessarily the people within the apartment that you are property that you're going to be um, using as the Airbnb, but also the people that are around that property, uh, meaning your neighbors. And it's extremely important to make sure that you have a little bit of an understanding of the people that are living around the general area of where that property is gonna be. If it's a single family home, then you wanna make sure you have a little bit of an idea of the people that live to the left and to the right and behind and in front of that particular property so that you can have a, a little bit of an idea of what the guest is going to experience when they first arrive. Um, for an apartment complex, it's a little bit more complex because you're dealing with sometimes walls that are very thin. And so um, people you know, also, um, depending on whether or not they, the neighbors smoke or if they're loud or if they have kids or dogs, it just becomes a little bit more complex in that, in that essence. And so you really have to be careful of um, you know, taking on responsibility of operating an Airbnb in an environment that isn't necessarily the best environment for uh, someone who's coming in from out of town or needs a place to stay and, and wants a relaxing, quiet environment. Um, and so that, that, that can be a little dicey at times. Uh, we've had instances where we've had, um, you know, whether it was noise complaints or um, people who were smoking inside their properties that was wafting into the property that we uh, were, were, were uh, renting out for, for a guest. And so um, just being able to uh, sort through those types of instances and, you know, obviously having a connection with the, uh, the apartment complex 
um, uh, management or uh, if there's an HOA, being able to reach out to them to kind of help handle those situations is something that we found extremely valuable because we want to make sure that every experience for our guests is a positive one. Um, not every experience, uh, experience will be a positive one, but we want to do everything in our power to make sure that, that we've done our homework, done our research, and are able to provide an environment that's not only safe, but also quiet and just kind of feels a little bit like a hotel room while also feeling a little bit more like their own private little place away from home. Next is where the guests actually come from. Airbnb has done a great job at coining the term Airbnb. When you say Airbnb, you think of short-term rental, you think of an apartment, a home that's furnished where someone can stay for a weekend or a week-long trip, things like that. However, there are other websites and companies that do offer short-term rental services. Some could be VRBO, Canada Stays, HomeAway, or even reaching out on your website. Now, the majority of our guests have come from Airbnb. I'll be frank. They have done a great job at marketing and promoting and just coining the term Airbnb. People think of the short-term rental. However, you have to list your properties on all types of sites to make sure you get the most exposure possible. So we have our properties listed on Airbnb, VRBO, Canada Stays, HomeAway, and we even have people that reach out on our website to stay with us. Now it's the guests themselves. Why do they travel? For us, we're located in Tempe, Arizona. It's very central to the Phoenix market. We're close to the airport, Arizona State University, downtown Phoenix, South Scottsdale, Chandler. We're just very central to the whole Phoenix market. So we've seen guests come for in the springtime for things such as spring training, uh, waste management open, golfing. There's a ton of golf in the Phoenix and Scottsdale Valley. Um, business travelers, we actually had someone um, come in who was a part of a convention at the Phoenix Convention Center, traveling to downtown Phoenix. We've had triathletes come into town from October through April is a big time for marathons, triathlons, tons of events going on. Um, Tempe Town Lake is close, they'll have concerts, weddings, the Phoenix Zoo is close by. A lot of leisure travel, but also surprisingly a lot of business travel. Like I said, you have the Phoenix Convention Center where people tra travel to, and we're very close to the Phoenix, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. So people like to fly in and then travel 10 minutes to our properties, and it's very central to the whole surrounding area. All right, lastly, um, the main people that you work with every day will be the people that are inside of your business themselves. So for us, it's the two of us. And uh, while in our first video, what we talked, what Connor mentioned is that we don't really have a lot of history working together in a business capacity, but uh, you know, I've known him since he was born, we're brothers. And so we've been able to have quite the relationship over the years in a bunch of other areas. So diving into a business, um, kind of a relationship wasn't as difficult as uh, someone who's a complete stranger, it may be, but um, for us, you know, there were some there were some stretch marks at times, but we've really come together well, and he has a lot of experience in some areas that I fall short in, and I feel like as though I have a lot of experience in areas that he doesn't have a lot of experience in, so we complement each other really well. But one of the most important things when dealing with not just a business partner, but a business partner who happens to be family, is kind of identifying the, the the tracks that you're both kind of going towards. Kind of, you know, whose responsibility is gonna be what, coordinating schedules, ensuring that there's really good solid communication regularly. Because in any business environment, if communication isn't great, the business probably isn't gonna be doing very well. Um, Cause you just, you can't go very long without having proper communication. And so, um, you know, while the past year and a half has been, um, quite an experience for us starting a business together. Uh, I would I would rather, or I would never have rather to do it with anybody else besides this guy right here. He's so dedicated, hardworking, and we just really, really work, work well together. And uh, you know, um, that's that's basically it. And I like you for your beer. Thank you, that's, that's, that's very kind of you. Thank you for joining us to another episode of The Type Team. I'm Connor. I'm Cameron. And we are the tight team. team.